This skill scenario is a collaborative effort. You will be working as an EMS team of two. Rescuer 1, first on scene, will do the assessment. Rescuer 2, second on scene, will be delegated tasks such as vitals and treatment by Rescuer 1. During the scenarios, rescuers shall wear appropriate PPE, gloves, and use all equipment to take vitals and perform procedures. The scenario will conclude with the patient report to higher medical authority. You may now check your equipment. You respond to the scene of a bike crash. The patient is an adult male who fell going approximately 30 miles per hour. Their helmet is cracked and you notice a deep laceration behind the right knee with a large pool of blood beneath the patient. My BSI is on, is my scene safe? You are on the bike path and the bike path is blocked by lifeguard trucks on both sides. And how many patients do I have? You have one patient. Right, the mechanism of injury is a bike crash at a high rate of speed. I'm gonna need additional resources, so I'm gonna call some. Uh, based on the mechanism of injury and the cracked helmet, we're gonna to need to apply spinal motion restriction and put on a C collar as soon as possible. As I approach my patient, what is his general imp impression? You approach the patient and they are still laying on the ground. You see a large pool of blood behind the right knee. Okay. Based on that general impression in the pool of blood, I'm gonna determine that my patient is in severe distress. Hi, my name is Francis. I'm an EMT. I'm here to help. Uh, what's your first and last name, sir? Uh, Chris. Chris? And what's your date of birth? Uh, 2888. 2888. What's hurting you the most? Uh, my leg. I your leg. Fell and I think it flipped my pedal. I cut my leg bad. It's bleeding a lot. Got you. Um, do we note any life threats? You see an arterial bleed behind the right knee with a large pool of blood. All right, rescuer two, can you apply direct pressure to that wound while I prepare a tourniquet? The bleeding continues through the gauze. I'm gonna apply the tourniquet above the wound. I'm gonna turn the windlass until the pulses are absent, until the bleeding stops. Rescue two, do you think you could check the pulses for me? Pulse is absent. Right. And has the bleeding stopped? The bleeding has stopped and pulses are absent. I note the time as well. Uh, rescue two, do you think you could hold inline stabilization of the head while I check the patient's neck and also check CMS and apply C collar? Does this hurt, Chris? No. No? No. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and check your radio pulses. Can you feel this? Yeah. Can you feel this? Uh-huh. Can you give me a thumbs up? Sweet. Check your feet. Awesome. Can you feel this? Yeah. Can you feel that? Uh-huh. You wiggle your toes? Okay. I'm gonna get the C collar now. I'm gonna fit it to my patient. It's fitted. Okay. Check your pulses again. Can you feel this? Mm-hmm. Can you feel this? Can you feel this? Yeah. Awesome. Can you feel that? Yeah. Can you wiggle your hands and your feet for me? Yeah. Perfect. All right, take that one. All right, my patient's airway is patent. He was able to talk to me clearly. Um, I'm gonna take a quick set of lung sounds. You breathe in for me. You breathe in for me again. All right, what were my findings? Clear bilaterally. All right. I'm also going to assess my patient's breathing rate and tidal volume. What are my findings? The patient is breathing at an increased rate with adequate tidal volume. I'm also going to assess my patient's 
heart rate and quality, and skin signs. What are my findings? The patient has a palpable radial pulse with an increased heart rate, and his skin signs are cool and pale. When I'm looking at my patient, do I note any deformities? None. All right, Rescue 2, could you go ahead and start cutting some clothes off so we could expose any other injuries? All right, this is Chris. He's 34 years old. He just had a bike accident. He has an arterial bleed behind his right knee. We applied a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. His airway is patent. His breathing is a little fast, but the tidal volume is adequate. His circulation is fast and strong. Skin signs cool and pale. This is a trauma patient, and we're going to have to load and go. Once you're done cutting that, uh, why don't you go ahead and give me a set of vitals, and I will do a rapid head-to-toe on our patient. I'm going to check the head, neck, chest, abdomen, hips, the lower extremities, upper extremities, Patient has abrasions on his chin, elbow, hip, and knee on his right side. Zero through 10, 10 being the worst pain in your life. How bad is your leg hurting right now? Uh, it's an eight. An yeah, eight? Yeah. Okay. Hey Chris, do you have any medical history I need to know about? No. Are you on any medications? No. Are you allergic to any medications? Uh, no. Okay, one second. Just gonna check your pupils. Pearl? The patient has a blood pressure of 98 over 70, heart rate 156, respiratory rate 28, SpO2 96%, skin signs are pale and cool. Okay, so that blood pressure is a little low. Why don't we go ahead and cover the patient with that blanket? All right, I'm going to administer oxygen via nasal cannula, two liters per minute. Paramedics arrive. Hi guys, how can we help? All right, this is Chris, he's 34 years old, alert and oriented. We arrived on scene to him lying next to his bike where he crashed. He has an arterial bleed behind his right knee. We applied a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. Based on the mechanism of injury and his cracked helmet, we applied a C collar. He has no history, allergies, or medications. Great, we'll take it from here.